Has taken and all my sorrows borne, and take for me the strong and mighty star. have taken and all my idols torn, from my heart and love he keeps me by his power. All forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's a fair instruction comes into my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live my faith and do his blessed will. Oh, all of my love me, I have nothing now to fear. I my and sweeping up the glory to see his blessed face where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright of morning snow. He's a feather of ten thousand to my soul. Oh. Yes, my. Your your voice is very faint. How about now? Yes, yeah, okay now. It's okay now. All right. right. Okay. Greetings to everybody watching us or doing their listening. This is Let the Bible Speak. By the mission of Jesus Christ, who said by our very own evangelist, we shall some more. Just as we do it each and every Saturday from two o'clock to three. Here is the letter Bible speak program. We will encourage our, our listeners and our viewers to send their comments, their questions, or contributions by our social media our platforms. And Facebook is at radio TV on TV. Also an evangelist personal window is Good afternoon, Mr. P.Y. <laughs> ah, good afternoon. How are you doing, sir? Well, by the grace of the mighty Father, we are doing very well. We thank God. We thank God Almighty. Uh, let me just hand over the platform to you so that we continue from where we end up here last time. All right. Thank you very much. Right. Good afternoon, my fellow brothers and sisters and my noble listeners. Uh, let us pray before we start our conversation. Our most high God, we thank you once again this afternoon. And we know very well, Lord, it is because of your grace and your divine majesty. That is why we are still alive. We are ushering ourselves under your umbrella of love this afternoon. Hoping and praying that we'll be at our beck and call so that all the things that we are going to discuss here will be ascended into your heavenly throne. In Christ's name, that we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Right. Good afternoon once again. And as I keep on saying almost every day, it is so refreshing to come and study under the feet of Christ once again. We are here not because of our own free will, but we are here because of the loving kindness and the tender mercies of the Supreme Head himself that has ushered us for us to come here and deliberate upon the issues that can bring salvation to all human flesh. So we are still talking about baptism. Baptism is the big umbrella under which we are operating this afternoon. And uh, the segment that we have reached this afternoon is a very important question. What about the thief on the cross? What about the thief on the cross? 
because Jesus Christ, during his, uh, his ministerial duties, he charged his disciples to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and that of the Holy Spirit. And henceforth, Christ commanded them to teach all those who are going to be the diligent listeners of, of that word and baptize all those people and teach them after us. And a lot of falsehood is going on. The bottom line is people keep on asking that if salvation uh, hinges basically on the water baptism, why is it that the thief on the cross, that guy was not baptized? And yes, so Jesus Christ did promise him salvation. A lot of falsehood is going on. Because when you go to the book of uh, 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 Acts chapter 2, when Peter was preaching during the days of Pentecost, you see, Peter, there was a, a, a solemn proclamation by Peter that unless, unless baptism has to be administered unto all those people, there is no way that they are going to get remission of sins. You see, apart from that, when we go to Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, the Bible tells us that Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, when he was apprehended on the road to Damascus, Paul, later on, he gave himself up for baptism. And we saw a clear manifestation within the lives of all these people that salvation, salvation, before we can get our salvation, we need to get ourselves baptized in water. Acts chapter 22, verse number 16, and first Peter chapter 3, verse number 21. All these Bible references have got something meaningful to tell us concerning all these things. Just as we go to the book of Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 to verse number 16 has also got something very, very meaningful to tell us. So on the other hand, this is was this same Jesus Christ who was telling the disciples that before anybody can be entered into the kingdom of heaven in John chapter 3, when he had an encounter with Nicodemus, Jesus Christ was able to come out with that solemn uh, proclamation that unless, unless uh, we get ourselves baptized or we are born with water and of the spirit, it will be very difficult for us to go into the kingdom of heaven. You see, when he was giving the great commission to the apostles, he said the same thing. In Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 to 16, and Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18 to 20, and Faith chapter 3, verse number 28, one also rubber stamp that baptism is a renewal of good conscience that can also lead us onto salvation. So Jesus Christ, if Jesus Christ comes after saying all these things, and eventually he make a U-turn to come and tell us that, oh, uh, this guy that he was hanging on the cross with, some years back, Jesus Christ did promise this guy that today you are going to be with me in paradise. You are going to be with me in paradise. You see, it, 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 it's ringing a, a lot of alarm bells within the ears of certain people. And a lot of people, even certain people who are within the Christendom, you see, a lot of people are trying to misinterpret this issue because they do not actually know the, 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 the metaphorical uh, statement that Jesus Christ made on the cross and the significance of this very statement that Jesus Christ made on the cross. You see, so a lot of questions have been raised. So many people are asking questions that why did Jesus Christ have to come out with this inscription? Why did Christ have to say all these things? A lot of questions are being raised. And this afternoon, I hope and pray that we are going to put everything to bed once and for all. So those who are watching this program and all those who are going to watch this program in future, please, 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 when you go to YouTube, go to uh, Let the Bible Speak radio program, Let the Bible Speak program, Church of Christ. When you go there, there are a lot of videos that has been posted over there. Just uh, like the, 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 the section and uh, be part uh, of that glorious um, sessions. And by so doing, you'll be able to indoctrinate your siblings, your friends, and all those who are very, very close to you. 
You see, in Luke chapter number 23, verse number 39 to 43, let us read something over there. And just as I keep on saying all the time, you see, I don't want to come and sit here and come out with certain inscriptions that are not in line with what the Bible actually says. So Luke chapter number 23, verse number 39 to verse number 43. Let's listen to what the Bible actually says. The Bible says, one of the criminals who hung there held insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. You see, Jesus Christ, he gave salvation to this man on the cross. And the bottom line is, was the Bible or Jesus Christ contradicting himself? The answer is no. You see, while Jesus Christ was alive, all the sayings that he was talking about, things concerning salvation, all those things, all those things uh, were, were activated after Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead. I'm saying all these things because when Jesus Christ was alive, Whereas Christ was alive, there was no need, there was no need for anybody who had an encounter with him to get baptized. Because Jesus Christ, he had the power. He had the power to forgive sins. Remember in John chapter 8, the lady who was caught in the act of fornication. When this lady was brought to Jesus Christ, what did Jesus Christ say? Jesus Christ said, look, after all the nitty gritties when Christ apprehended all those people who were trying to accuse this lady. Jesus Christ said, go, I have forgiven you. Do not go and sin again. Don't go and do that anymore. I have also forgiven you. You see, Jesus Christ, he had the power to forgive sins. And the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 21, in Acts chapter 2, verse number 28, these Bible references tells us that we get remission of sins through baptism. We get remission of sins through baptism. And who is the very person who has got that power to forgive sins through baptism? It is Jesus Christ, the God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. They are the three separate entities, the three separate bodies who have got the power to forgive we the mortals some of the sins, the atrocities, that we have committed in this world. So Jesus Christ, in the nutshell, the bottom line is, while Jesus Christ was alive, there was no need for anybody to get himself baptized in order, in order for his sins to be forgiven. But the reason why Jesus Christ did what he did to the thief on the cross, you see, just as I said, even though Christ has already lamented, that all those who will be able to uh, come into the kingdom, all those who will be able to uh, get remission of sins, all those people, they have to go through that initial or that initiation process. But Jesus Christ over here, as I said, all the inscriptions, all the things that he said that pertains to salvation, all those things were activated after he was resurrected from the dead. But whilst he was still alive, there was no need for water baptism when jesus christ was still alive that was the reason why he was able to tell the thief on the cross that today you are going to be with me in paradise christ was able jesus christ was still alive on the cross christ was still alive so there was no need there was no need for that man to be baptized it is very very simple it is as simple as that jesus christ he was still alive so he had the power to forgive sins during those days. Christ, he had the power to forgive sins. So if anybody comes and tell you that what Jesus Christ did was wrong, Christ was trying to contradict himself, let's listen to what, what the Bible says. Well, let, let us have a look at two important, um, or what do you call it, um, 
Bible examples. This will tell you that Jesus Christ, when he was alive, when Christ was alive, Jesus Christ, he had power to forgive sins. He had power to forgive sins. And just as I said, baptism, we get remission of sins through baptism. We get remission of sins through baptism. And that baptism, that sorry, that remission of sins, we get that one through the blueprint of God Jehovah himself. You see, so if Jesus Christ was alive, Christ himself was alive, the Bible says he had the power to forgive sins. Let's read something from the book of Luke chapter 5. Let's read from verse number 17 to verse number 26. Let's listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, one day as he was teaching Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus Christ. When they could not find a way to this because of the crowd, they went on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Friends, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone who, well, everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. You see, my brothers and my sisters, a lot is resting on our shoulders these days. You see, the Bible is telling us, the Bible is telling us over here that Jesus Christ, the super supreme architect of the universe himself, Jesus Christ over here was telling us that he had the power to forgive sins. He had the power to administer justice in the face of all these sins. That is the reason why he was able to tell the paralytic man, your sins have been forgiven. When he said all these things, you see, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they weren't amazed. They, 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 they weren't amused, sorry. And for that reason, they decided to question Jesus Christ. They decided to question among themselves within their hearts. And Jesus Christ, he was the all-knowing God. For that reason, he saw what those people, what they were thinking within their mind. And he said to them, which one is easier to say your sins have been forgiven or to take up your mat and walk away? So Jesus Christ, upon saying all these things, he said to this man, get up from the bed and walk away. And immediately, the Bible tells us that the paralytic man was able to get up from his bed and he walked away. My brothers and sisters, you see, just as I've just demonstrated from the Bible, Jesus Christ, he had the power, he had the power to forgive sins. Christ, he had the power to forgive sins. And on the same wavelength, let's see something in Luke chapter 7, verse number, verse number 36 to verse number 50, 14 verses. Let's listen to another typical example. And the Bible says, now, one of the Pharisees invited him to have a dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And when a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at the feet weeping, she began to wet the feet with her tears. Then, she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. 
And when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of man she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owe money to a certain money lender who owe him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, uh, many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven, little laughs little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. My brothers and my sisters, you see, all these spiritual exercise, all these things that we are coming out with, we are coming out with all these Bible references just to cement the authority, just to let you know, just to re-echo for you to come to the full realization that indeed Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, when he was alive, when Christ was alive, he had the power, Christ had the power to forgive sins. Christ had the authority to forgive sins. That is the reason why he said to the, the, to the, to the lady that go, your sins has been forgiven you. That is the reason why he said to the paralytic man, take your bed and go, and your sins has been forgiven. So in the same wavelength, when he was on the cross with the, with, with the criminal, Jesus Christ, he was still alive. So baptism, baptism was not yet, baptismal code was not yet activated during those days. And for that reason, and for that reason, Jesus Christ had the power to forgive sins. That is the reason why he said to this man, go, and I know very well that your sins have been forgiven. That is the reason why he said to the thief on the cross, today, today you are going to be with me in paradise. What was Jesus Christ talking about? Because just as we, we the human beings, when we die, our souls, our souls goes into the Hadean world. In the Hades, as some are though in the Hades, right? The, 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 the spirit of the dead, the spirit of the dead, or, or the souls of the dead, there are two places. The place has been divided into two. Those who are doing what is right in the sight of the Lord, that is where they are being kept. And those who did not listen to the voice of God, they also have a place that they are being kept. And the righteous people, where the righteous people are, that is where Jesus Christ also went. And he promised that man on the cross, that because his sins have been forgiven, he is going to be with Jesus Christ on paradise. That is basically what the Bible tells us. Lord willing, next week, when we come to this platform, we are going to prove from the Bible that there are certain people who did not get water baptism. There are certain people who did not get baptized, but the Bible tells us categorically that those people, those people, they are in the hidden world. Those people in the Hadean world, they are in paradise waiting for the judgment day. Those people, they are in paradise. Where the righteous people are, that is where those people are at the moment. And yes, so those people, they did not receive any water baptism. And I can tell you, I can tell you these days, no matter how good this that you perform, I can tell you as soon as Jesus Christ has arisen from the dead, as soon as Jesus Christ has arose from the dead, I'm telling you, before you will be able to be ushered into the bosom of Christ, before you'll be able to be ushered into the bosom of Abraham, before you can go to paradise, 
my brothers and my sisters, I can tell you 100% this um, afternoon that you need, you need to get yourself baptized in water. You need to get yourself baptized in water before you will be able to get your salvation. Next week, Lord, when we come, we are going to continue from this very area. So without wasting much of your time, I'd like to invite Mr. P.Y. back on stage. And if you have any question that pertains to what we have discussed so far on this platform, please feel free and fire them away. And we do our best to answer all those queries uh, based on the Bible. So Mr. P.Y., if you are there, please, over to you. Hello, Evangelist. Yes, sir. All right. So thank you very much. Uh, myself, the audience, the viewers, we appreciate your time very much for always getting time to share with us the word of God. Today, we have two questions from brethren who join in the conversation. The first one is coming from Eric. Eric is asking, were people baptized before Jesus Christ? And what was the purpose of their baptism? Okay. Yeah. So Certain that. people were baptized before Jesus Christ. Um, the first group of people who were baptized before Jesus Christ were those people who lived during the days of Noah. The Bible tells us the way that Jesus Christ, the way that God Jehovah saved Noah and his household, it was baptism. That is what the Bible says. And when the nation of Israel, God Jehovah decided to deliver them from the Egyptian uh, bondage, the crossing of the Red Sea or the passing through the Red Sea, the Bible says that one too, it was a baptism. That is what the Bible says. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so um, if if I could understand very well, so were they also immersed? Were they, were they also immersed in water? As yes, the fairness. You see, um, Noah, was, Noah was in the ark. The ark was suspended on the surface of the water. There was water underneath, and there was rain also falling on top of the ark. So technically, they were submerged. They were they were covered with water, both left, right, center, and everywhere. They were covered in water. And when you go to the crossing of the Red Sea as well, the Bible tells us that the 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 sea was divided into two and they walk through dry land. You see what I mean? And God Jehovah decided to use clouds to cover them. You see, so the Bible says they were covered uh, with all those things. So they were they were submerged or they were immersed. That is what the Bible actually talks about. Okay, okay. On this same question, about uh, they being, the water being above Noah and then below, that you mentioned, does it, does it necessarily mean that the water has to touch you or you just have to be in the water with the immersion of baptism. That, that, that's does the water have to touch you, or once you are in the water, there's a water above you and water below it is baptism. Because my my understanding is um when you are being baptized and then some part of your body even comes out, you are being immersed again. So so long as so long as the entire body, because the Bible tells us the baptism, it is a spiritual exercise, even though we are submerging you in water physically, but the water spiritually turns into the blood of Christ spiritually and washes away the sins. You see what I mean? Okay. So obviously, just as the Bible says, when somebody is being buried, the whole body has to be submerged under the grave. The same thing applies to water. Uh, the same thing applies to baptism. That is the reason why we are teaching all the time that baptism cannot be act of pouring or cannot be act of sprinkling. You see what I mean? So the entire body has to be submerged under the water. Thank you very much, Dan. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So if the last follow-up question on this one, if I am getting this clearly 
Yeah, does it mean that their form of baptism, their their procedure is different from what it's been done now? Because they were in the ark. Their bodies were not emerged in the water. So the water didn't touch them. But now baptism, and we would imagine the whole body is being immersed. So uh, is there any changes in the form of baptism from now to now to this time? No, nothing has changed. I'm going to read something in the Bible. The Bible tells us that it was a symbolic exercise. It was symbolic exercise because their entire body, they, everything was of made. They were covered in water, even though they were in the ark. You see what I mean? The Bible tells us that it was a symbolic exercise. Let's go to the book of First Peter, chapter number three, verse number uh, eighteen down. The Bible says, "For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous." To bring you to God, he was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, whilst the ark was being built. In it, only a few, eight in all, were sealed through water. And this water symbolizes and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also not the removal of death from the body but the pledge of a good conscience towards god it saves you by the resurrection of christ jesus that is what the bible talks about so the bible is saying that the the, the way god jehovah chose to save noah and his household the Bible is telling us that it was a symbolic exercise. It's like not at the same. You see what I mean? It was a, a, a symbolic exercise that okay. took place. That's basically what the Bible actually says. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So the next one is coming from James. So James was saying that in your narrations today, you kept on mentioning that when Jesus was alive, he had the power to forgive sins. Yes. Now he died and arose again. Does he still have the power to forgive sins? Or that yes. sins has been given to yes. someone? Yes. Jesus Christ, he has power to forgive sins. That is the reason why whenever we do sins that are not right, we have to go down on our knees and pray. Because in Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 18, let's listen to what Jesus Christ himself says. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to tell them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Apart from this, Apostle Paul also, there was another narrative in the book of Philippians chapter 2. And the Bible says, um, let, let me see. The, yeah, Philippians chapter 2, verse number 9, it says, Therefore, God has exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow in heaven, and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, so Jesus Christ, he is still in control, even though he's not with us physically, but mind you, Jesus Christ is not dead. He's still alive. Christ okay. is alive. So he's operating spiritually. He is still alive. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Evangelist. So this is the set of questions that we go from our uh, listeners today uh, thank you very much for having time to elaborate and giving them the answers that they needed um, but then there is one still follow-up question from uh, from Eric on the first mm -hmm. one, on the baptism so Eric uh, would want to ask uh, John the Baptist was he baptizing people? Were there some people he was baptizing before the mention of Jesus Christ, his baptism of Jesus Christ? Were there people he baptized? Yes, John the Baptist was baptizing people for the remission 
of sins for them to change up their mind and come and follow Jesus Christ. That was basically the, the purpose for John's baptism. It wasn't meant for salvation, but it was meant for repentance, for them to change their crooked ways and come and follow Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. That okay. is basically the reason why John, the, John was baptizing. It's as simple okay. as that. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. So uh, uh, that is where we end our question for today for uh, from our listeners and then our, our streamers. So I'll hand back over to you, hear from you again, a word of prayer, and then we end the program for today. Let us pray, Mr. P.Y. Thank you very much. Our God in heaven, we thank you for being at our beck and call. We are here this afternoon sowing your seed that can bring salvation to all human flesh. Be with us and bless us in the name of Christ Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Amen. All right. We thank all our listeners for joining in today. Catch you same time next week here on our country for radio uh, for the same event. Also, tomorrow at 3 p.m., uh, we are on again with the same letter Bible received by who said by our very own evangelist. Thank you very much, Mr. P.Y. All right.